How's everyone today? I'm, I'm good. good. I'm fine. Fine. All right, can I get cameras on from everyone, please? Neymar, Swingdan, Myth. Myth, are you there? Okay. Uh, what was our homework from yesterday? Does anyone remember? Write uh, the response for one from. Mm -hmm. Yep, choose. Okay, to mm -hmm. and nine and uh, 59. I don't know. Choose one of the compare text prompts and write to respond to it. Would anyone like to share with us their response? Myth, are you ready to share with us? Myth. Okay, no one wants to share? All right, we are going to talk about a persuasive essay today. Uh, actually, before we do that, I want to go over some of our quizzes questions from yesterday. So let's look at Some of these, the first one that a lot of you missed. At the beginning of the play, where are older brother and younger brother playing? So where were the two brothers playing at the beginning of the play? In the river. In the river. They were playing in, in the, river. River. the river. Some people chose in the cave. Is there a cave at all in that story? No. No, I don't think so. So the river is the correct choice. Okay, so we know the river was in the forest, but they were more specifically in the river. Remember they were doing what? What were the stage directions? Uh, they are playing the water at state one. Mm hmm. And what were they doing with the water? Splashing. They were splashing each other. Okay. Um, are our cameras not working today? Swing Dan and Lily, what's going on with the cameras? Swing Dan and Lily, what's going on with your cameras today? Okay, number two, which sentence from the play shows that the animal's feelings about measuring worm are changing in scene three? So our clue word here, or our key word is changing. So what do we think? How do we know that the animal's feelings were changing about measuring worm? He will not fail you now. Be careful, my children. Your name is longer than you are. We will never get back to our mother. Antum? Yes? Can you tell us which sentence shows the animal's feelings are changing? Um, your name is longer than you are. So is that telling about, so that's a sentence about measuring worm. What does that one tell? 
how their feelings are changing. How did all the animals feel about measuring worm at the beginning of the play? Uh, they, uh, um, they feel, uh, they feel, they have bad feeling about measuring worm. Did they think he'd be able to get up the mountain? Uh, no. No. So this one here, your name is longer than you are. Does that tell about them changing their feelings or would that be them having the same feeling? Um, the same feeling. The same feeling, but we want to know about a change in feeling. So that's why C is not the correct answer. So I think be careful with my children. Is that about measuring worm or is that about the two cubs? About the two, two cubs. Okay, who is this question asking about? Uh, he will not fail you now. Okay, and who is he? Is a measuring wolf. Mm -hmm. Yep. So does everyone understand why this question, the answer is A? So they're going from changing to thinking he's unable to climb the mountain to knowing that he will be able to. Does that make sense for everyone? Um, what about, what is Mother Grizzly's main problem in scene two? So A, none of the animals were brave. Is that true in scene two? No. No. All the animals tried to do what? Have a... Uh... Help her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they all tried to climb the mountain, which means that they are trying to be brave. They're just unable to. None of the animals will help her. Is that true, Maradona? No. No, what did all the animals try to do? Help her. They all tried to help her, so we know that one's definitely not true. None of the animals can see her cubs. Myth, was that one true? Myth? Yeah. What are you doing now? Um, I'm eating because I don't need to eat my breakfast. Why not? I would up it. So either put your breakfast away or get off the meeting until you're finished with your breakfast. I put it away. Okay. None of the animals can see her cubs. Was this true in scene two? No. No. Which of the animals was able to see her cubs? A uh, hawk. Huh. Hawk, right? Hawk was flying over the mountain and he was able to see her cub or her cubs. So we'll say that one's not true because Hawk could see them. And what about the last one? None of the animals are able to reach her cubs. Is this one true? Yes, no. Yes. Yes? Right. So by the end of scene two, none of the animals were able to reach her cubs. So that is her main problem. And last one, how can you tell that the animals have learned an important lesson? They laughed at measuring worm. They named the mountain Tutakanula. They see that a stone has grown into a mountain. They are unable to rescue older brother and younger brother. Neymar, which of these tell the animals have learned an important lesson? Uh, we need to help them. We need to help them. That's not one of the options.
Say again, Neymar. Which one? I don't know. You don't know? So let's go through them. So what was the lesson? What was one of the lessons that the animals learned in the story? Neymar. Do you remember the lessons that they learned? What did they uh, think about measuring worm at first? They measure worm the small he can help he can not rescue the mm -hmm. Were they correct when they thought that? No. No. So what lesson did they learn? Even though someone is small, but they can still do big things, right? So they laughed at measuring worm. Does that show that the animals learned a lesson? No. No, definitely not. They named the new mountain Tutakanula. Why did they name the mountain Tutakanula? Whose name was that in the play? Measuring Worm. So they named the mountain after who? Measuring Worm. Would that show that they learned a lesson about him and his no. size? No. No? Why did they name the mountain after Measuring Worm? Uh, because he was too. because he was able to rescue the cubs? Would that show that they learned a lesson about small animals still being able to be helpful? Uh, the... So at first they thought he was too small and then they learned that even small animals can do big things. So what did they do to honor him? Laugh. They laughed at him to honor him? Mm -hmm. What did the animals do at the end of the story to honor Measuring Worm? Uh... They named their new mountain Tutakanula. Does that show that they've learned a lesson? Yeah. Yes. Okay, what about they see that a stone has grown into the mountain? Does that show they've learned a lesson? No. No. Uh, they are unable to rescue older brother and younger brother. No. So our answer for this one is B. They named the new mountain to Takanula after measuring worm. Okay, does anyone have questions about the quizzes questions? Now we understand them now? Okay, so we're gonna move on and talk about writing. So we're gonna look at an example essay. So we're going to write a persuasive essay um, for this lesson. No, we're not. We're going to do the planning for a persuasive essay for this lesson. So the prompt is to write an essay persuading your readers to work together towards something you believe is important. So let's read our example essay first. Um, Courage, can you read the first page, or sorry, the first part of the letter for us, or the essay? 
uh, every year thousands of dogs and cat get lost if they don't do not have license licenses licenses and tax they might never find their way home buying a licenses and tax is one of the easiest thing you can do to keep your pet safe every pet should have one if we work together to get every pet a licenses and tag, there will not be so many lost animals. The first person, the first reason pets need licenses and tags is that they help lost animal get home quickly. If animal services find a lost pet with a lenses, they will bring it back to its home immediately. The tag will tell animal survivors where the animal lives. Leave. The animal will be back with it on on the right way that will make pet and owner very happy okay right, good job thank you courage and tang an can you read the second half of our essay okay second if a lost pet get hurt and is taken to a vet the vet can contact the owner without a license and tag, vets cannot find the owner of sick or injured animals. <clears throat> if your pet has a license, license, you will know right what way that it is getting the help it needs. You might think the pet leases a waste of money. After all, if a pet stay inside and never get lost, why would it need a license? When you buy a license, true, the money doesn't just pay for a set of tasks. It has pay for animal control and for animal shelters if everybody run and in join in and buy a lions lessons there will be more money to help animals find loving homes the last thing you need to know is how to get a pet license if you call your local animal shelter a volunteer volunteer will help you buy one Pets are our friends. Listen, listeners will keep them safe and healthy. If you care about animals as much as I do, please buy a license for the pet today. All right, thank you, Tang An. So let's look at the different parts of this essay. Um, before we start, how many, how is this essay organized? How many different paragraphs do we see here? Maradona, how many paragraphs are in this essay? Two. Two. And another three. Three. Still, still not. Okay, let's count together. Five. One, so we know that it's a new paragraph when we skip a line. So we're done with that line. We skip down to the next one and our next line is indented. That means it goes in, Five. all right? So we have one, two, three, four, 
five. So we are going to be practicing writing a five paragraph essay. Okay, so uh, for lesson 19, we will be doing the pre-writing only to make sure that we have enough reasons, facts, details um, to support our opinion. And then for lesson 20 is when we will write our actual essay. So we have plenty of time to prepare. Okay, so let's keep in mind, how is the essay organized? In what way did the writer place the opinion, facts, reasons, and details? So in our first paragraph, the introduction paragraph, we have our writer's opinion. Queen Don, what is the opinion? Um. Um. So our writer's opinion, can you find it in the first paragraph? Buying a Linsen's and tag one is one of the easiest thing you can do to keep your pet, pet safe. Every pet should have one. Yep, good job. So the writer thinks that buying a license and tag, one of the easiest things you can do to keep your pet safe, everyone or every pet should have one. Okay, so we get our opinion at the beginning in our introduction paragraph. Okay, and then this writer also tells us why it's important. Um, Aisha, why is it important that every pet has a license and tag? Um, because it can keep a pet safe. By doing what? Uh, by uh, buying a linsen and tag. So if we if we work together to get every pet a license and tag, then what will happen? Uh, there will not be so many loose animals. Lost animals, right? So it's important to keep animals at home and not lost. Okay, so our next paragraph is our body paragraph one. So this starts off with the reason. Mayor Donna, what is the first reason that this writer gives us? You uh, lost pet, this shirt and mm. pet needs license and tax is that they have lost animals to get home quickly. Yep, they help lost animals get home quickly. So that is our first reason. And then to support that reason, we have details. So, Myth, tell me a detail about getting lost pets home quickly. Um, uh, Myth? So, uh, Anna, the first reason Pet needs what is this? Licenses. Licenses. And tag is they have have lost and will get home quickly. So that's our reason. Can you tell me some details that tell more about the reason? If animal can find um a lost person. Listen to this, they will bring it back to its home immediately. The task will tell animals behind for the animal The animal will be back with, with its owner right away. It will make pet and owner very happy. Okay. So thank you, Myth. The structure of that paragraph is the reason is the main idea and then supporting details. 
Okay, and then what about body paragraph number two? What is the reason here, Harry Kane? A uh, second, if you if a lost pet gets hurt and it is taken to a vet, the vet can contact the owner. All right, good job. And the reason, or sorry, the details, Angto. Um, look out. Um. Uh, a license and tax, and that cannot find the owner of six or injured animal. If a pet has a license, you know right away that it is getting help in it. Okay. So, our reasons and then details are a normal way of organizing your body paragraphs. And then the next body paragraph gives a counter argument. So this is an argument saying, well, you might think that pet licenses are a waste of money. Queen Dan. So the writer is thinking about what arguments the person will have against his or her opinion. Okay, so that's called a counter argument. So they're saying people might say that pet licenses are a waste of money. And then the writer gives us reasons why it's not a waste of money. So what reasons does the writer give us that it's not a waste of money? Um, if you call your local animal shelter, a volunteer will help you buy one. Uh, and pets need lenses to tag is that they help us animal get home. Uh, so do you see which paragraph we're on? Yes. Which paragraph? The fourth paragraph. Okay. So I just said this is our counter argument, right? Yes. Which means the writer is thinking about things that the audience would say. Well, licenses are too expensive. So then they're gonna give reasons why it's not too expensive. It help, helps pay for animal control and for animal shelters. Yep, so that's a reason why it's not a waste of money. Helps pay for animal control and shelters. Okay, good job. And then our conclusion paragraph, our concluding statement is what wraps up our essay and restates the writer's opinion. Aisha, can you read the concluding statement? The last thing you need to know is how to let a pet listen. If you call your local animal shelter, a volunteer will help you by one, pets are our friends. Linces will keep them safe and healthy. If you care about animals as much as I do, please buy a lizard for your pet today. Okay, so this is our call to action at the end. If you care about animals as much as I do, please buy a license for your pet today. So they are asking you to do something at the end. Does anyone have questions about our example essay? So this is an example of what your essay should look like when we're finished writing. So Ace, how many paragraphs in our persuasive essay? Five. Five. Myth, how many paragraphs will your persuasive essay be?
Miss. Yeah. How many paragraphs will your persuasive essay be? How many paragraphs in this persuasive essay? Two. Where do you see two? I think it's five. Five. So how many paragraphs will your persuasive essay be? Five. Five. Okay, so. Let's look at the different parts of a persuasive essay. Uh, Lily, can you read the first bullet point for us? The writer states an opinion and provides reasons, details, and examples to support that opinion. All right, good job. So an opinion statement, which is what you think or how you feel. And then to support your opinion, you will need to give reasons. And to tell more about your reasons, you will give details and examples. Okay. Um, what about bullet point two? Neymar, read for us, please. The writer persuades the reader to agree with the opinion by answering any opinion the reader might have. Mm -hmm. So you need to think, if the reader is reading my essay, what arguments will they have against me? In our example, what paragraph did we see the writer answer that argument? And which paragraph here did the writer um, answer the reader's argument? Uh, paragraph five? Um, no. Four. Paragraph four, right? That's when the writer said, you might think that a pet license is a waste of money. After all, if a pet stays inside and never gets lost, why would it need a license? So that is something they're thinking the readers might argue against them. And then they give an answer. So it helps pay for animal control and animal shelters to help animals find loving homes. So your money is going to a good cause. Okay, so you need to think way far in advance. What are your readers going to say and argue back against you and answer their arguments already? And finally, what do we need in our essay, Maradona? Uh, concluding statement makes a final persuasive point or summarize the writer reasons. Okay, so your conclusion summarizes your point, wraps up the essay, restates your opinion. So we need to talk about audience. Queen Don, what do I mean when I say audience? It's the people that uh, listen mm -hmm. or read or read, yep. So your audience is going to be the people that you are writing to. Who is going to read your writing? Okay, so your audience can be different depending on the prompt. So you want your audience to care about what you are writing about. So you want to think, is your idea good? Give reasons to persuade your audience, reasons that they will care about. Okay, so you need to give, you might need to change your reasons depending on the audience that you're writing to. So for example, if we are writing about producing less waste, 
if our audience is other teachers, let's think of what kinds of things will other teachers care about? About their money. About what? About money. About money? So that they is... could live. Okay, but our topic is what, Ace? Producing less weight. Wait. Okay, does that have anything to do with money? No. We're talking about trash or waste at school. So our other teachers might say, I care about the school. I care about my students. How can we make our school better? Right, so you need to keep these in mind if you are writing to persuade other teachers to produce less waste. All right, so think, who will your audience be and what will your audience care about? So if we are writing an essay, a persuasive essay uh, to other students, so students at school, what are some things that students care about? Um, playing with playing. friends. Playing with friends, like, okay. So who in here likes to play with friends at school? Ace, Hurricane, anyone else? Myth? No one else likes to? Lily, what do you care about at school? Um. So Ace and Harry Kane and Myth all like time to play with friends. So Lily, what's something that you care about at school? I can read books. School. Reading books. So what do you, um, like you want extra time to read books? Yeah. So more time for reading. Okay. What's something else that we care about? I'm getting in the class. Say again. Oh, fun game in the class. Okay. So fun games and activities in class. Excellent myth. Good job. So these are things that students care about. Okay. If we were writing an essay and our audience was not the students, but the parents of students, what are some things that your parents care about? Score. Scores of what? Uh, of test. Test scores. Okay, good job. What else? Uh, environment. The environment, like our, what do you mean? Uh, like, literally, who have many trust. I want like a healthy and safe environment for you to learn in. Uh, yes. Okay, right, good job. Healthy and safe learning environment. Yep, definitely. What else do mom and dad care about? Neymar, what do your parents care about? Uh, no. We are sick. Not getting sick? Okay. So it says students not getting sick. So how does this look compared to what the students care about? Is it the same or is it pretty different? Mm, pretty different. Pretty, pretty different, different, right? So. You need to think about who am I writing to? 
who is my audience and what kinds of things can I say to convince them? Because it's going to be different for each type of audience. So for homework this weekend, you're going to do uh, page 47 in your reader's notebook. Okay, so read the section up at the top and then you're going to read about each writer and his or her purpose. Underline the reason that the writer's audience would care most about. Okay, so we have who's writing and who the, that person's audience is. And then I also want you to brainstorm a list of topics to use for a persuasive essay. Think about issues you care about at school, at home, or in your community. Okay, so like less producing less waste would be an example of one. So think of at least three different topics and we'll do a brainstorming um, session on Monday together. Does anybody have any questions? No. No? Okay, no. I'll put this on Google Classroom as well. Okay. I'll see you on Monday. Have a good weekend. Bye. 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 Bye, Bye, Bye. Bye. Have a good night.